Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Brief, which is the next version of Seth. Com that comes out somewhere in the autumn, I believe. And Brief uh, has a bunch of new features. It has a new dashboard interface and added some feature to the dashboard as well. Um, and of course, a lot of different security and improvements for performance and so on. Some of which I can't really test today, but we are at least going to look at the dashboard. I'm going to talk a little bit about the process coming there. Because the problematic part that I have here is that I tried to build it myself. And they said we should try it out now. And of course I could have done a developer build and run a developer server, but I want to build the actual packages and run a real production deployment. And that was a little bit more difficult than I actually <laughs> believed. So I started out with Debian, of course, Bullseye didn't work out that well. So I went back to Buster, tried to build it there as well. Wrong Python version, a lot of different issues back and forth. Uh, so I tried some Ubuntu versions, couldn't really get it to build there either. Uh, it built pretty well uh, when you did the full build, but uh, didn't get the full build to work uh, as well. So I read up on it and they said that they actually have gone from deprecating the build process for Debian and Ubuntu and have gone over to using CentOS. And uh, I also looked at the Docker images and they, they were built on CentOS as well, CentOS 7. So I installed the CentOS 7, of course, both 2009, 2022.07. Um, and both of those didn't work at all because they didn't have the right Python version and tried a bunch of different um, changes, went back and built a bunch of different um, ca um, commits and tried to actually get it to build that way. Didn't work either. I installed CentOS Streaming 9, uh, so a very much newer version. That didn't work at all. So. That was a little bit frustrating to actually go back and forth and trying to get that to work. And then I realized that CentOS has another open source version called Fedora that is very similar and should be also something that could be built. And Fedora was also um, talked about in the deployment script. So it checked for different versions there. So I installed the latest Fedora, which was... Um, um, Workstation Fedora 38 and that didn't work uh, really good in my environment so I installed the server version and tried to run that. That works a little bit better in uh, VirtualBox. So 38 I ran it there, wrong Python version, didn't really build well, the whole process all over again. So I went back to version 35 which is the one that is mentioned in the build script as available from 35 and forward and um, or greater. So I tried 35, didn't work. And then 36, that actually built. So I built it, the full build, all packages, everything built on 35. And then I tried to build it creating Debian packages. And that process didn't really build all of the scripts. It built some of them, but not everything. So it was a little bit lighter, a little bit more simpler, and it built on Fedora as well. So I thought, okay, let's go back to Ubuntu, where I have a little bit more... Um, I tried Debian first, but that didn't work at all. But I went back to Ubuntu, so I actually have uh, Debian packages to work with. I'm a little bit more familiar with that. And it actually built on Ubuntu as well. So now I have Debian packages that I can install which is a huge difference. So let's switch over to my screen here and we can see what packages I actually installed of the Debian packages. So first off, I installed the Debian Ceph and Ceph Common. And those are the ones that I install in the repository usually when I do an uh, install manually. So I installed those and then I got uh, informed that I needed of course the manager and the monitor and the OSD. So I installed those as well. 
And when it comes to the manager, I also wanted the modules, the disk prediction local and dashboard, of course. I use those, so I added those into it as well. And moreover, uh, you of course need the Ceph base, which is another good package to have. And Ceph volume, it's a tooling that makes it easier to create OSDs. And then Ceph has these kind of Python libraries for CephFS, RGB, RGB, Radius, and also common and argparse uh, Python libraries. And then we want the libraries for RBD and Rados, Rados Stripper and CephFS libraries, um, SQLite 3 libraries and RGV2. So all those libraries are required to be installed when you install the system. Um, when you just say, I want Ceph and Ceph common, then all these Debian packages need to be installed as well. You could install these and then you are in a system bad state and you can say fix my system and it will install all the dependencies that you need and that is actually what i did and then i installed these packages again so i knew that all of them installed with all the dependencies that was needed before i did that i looked at what dependencies it was talking about so these are some of them i haven't really found all of them so python pretty table Babel Trace, Lib Format 8, the Lib Google Perf Tools, uh, Lib Lua, RabbitMQ, Kafka, Snappy, Trift, and then Vim uh, is something that wasn't installed on my Ubuntu server for some reason. So I wanted to have that, of course. Uh, NumPy, SciPy, SQLearn, Bcrypt, uh, PyTest in the Python libraries. Fuse is used, of course. OAuth. Rotate and Parted and PS Misc. So those are some of the packages. There is more packages required for this installation. But after I installed all of that, I could start running in my system. So I installed a four host system with four OSDs, three managers, three monitors, uh, three MDSs, so everything is pretty much the normal thing that I use for testing. And uh, when I set that up, I created a file system. I moved some uh, uh, these Debian packages and some other things that I had laying around. Uh, so I've put over about uh, 13 gigabytes to this system. And we can see here that I can see, you can see the amount that we have filled up here. And then they also have a warning and a danger level up here, which is showing with these gray bars. I'm not really sure that that is a super great uh, representation of capacity. We had a lot of other dials and so on before that showed up, which I liked a little bit more. Then you have this cluster utilization. And the sad part here is I have not seen any information here at all. Um, so I wonder if this is taken directly from Grafana now and that you need to set up something special in Grafana. I have set up Grafana, but I haven't looked into if there is something special that needs to be set up in order to get these uh, utilization. So that is something I need to look up into. Another part is that you see the status. It just shows that I have a health warning here. I created this health warning just to demonstrate because if it's a okay cluster status, then you shouldn't really see something. But they actually show in their example some issues in the status area here and I see nothing. So that is another thing I want to look into. Why doesn't you show anything here? Does that have to do that I don't have any orchestrator? Could be, because you see here, orchestrator not available. Has they created a GUI that is requires an orchestrator now. Um, we can see the Ceph version. That was harder to see earlier. Uh, they removed that from the host uh, for some odd reason. And now you can see it on the dashboard, which is nice. You can see your FSID here. That is something that you never change, never use really. So maybe if you have a bunch of different clusters, it could be good to know which cluster you are looking at. Um, then you have a summary of what is installed here, number of PGs, pools, and so on. And you can go to the different parts here by link. 
I think it's easier to go by the links in the right hand side. This text is too small to actually read for that purpose. So it's easier to click over here. Other than that, not much has changed on these different menus. I haven't installed all of the different things. So there could be some different nuances that have changed on these uh, um, pages, of course. As you see, I've installed Grafana, so I get that dashboard. Uh, we can see which clients are in uh, in here in my CFFS. Um, I haven't installed any blocks, so we don't see anything there. The pools is very much similar information as before. Uh, that haven't really changed there. One thing I found that was interesting, and I now can see users. That is something that was not presented before. So now we can actually see all the users in the system and we can figure out what, what is going on. So if we take change this value to 20, for instance, we can see that we have OSD users, specific users for each OSD. We have specific users for the managers, the MDSs. We have client here, so we have client for admin, we have the bootstrap uh, clients, and we also have my FS user that I created. And we can see what kind of um, permissions that user has. So this is a good overview to know when you have installed and create a bunch of different users uh, to see what kind of permissions you have given them. You can also go in for one user here and change permissions, add new permissions, remove old permissions and so on. So I think that is a good addition to the uh, GUI here. Uh, other than that, I haven't really seen that much of a change. So I clicked around here, looked at most of the uh, different menus and they display pretty much the similar information as before. So, uh, this was what I wanted to show you today. Wanted to look at the new dashboard and the changes going on there. Talk a little bit about the process of installing and building Reef uh, now before it's actually released. It is more complicated. When it's released, you will have packages. Everything will be easy to install uh, in your system, of course. If you're running with the orchestration Ceph admin or Rook, it's even easier because everything is packaged in images and you just install those. Uh, so everything will be there for you. You will not even be thinking about these kind of things. Um, and yeah, I think uh, the dashboard is perhaps a step back. Uh, this kind of history or histograms on the dashboard for the utilization could be interesting. So you can actually see how the usage are during uh, let's say a day so you can see where your hot spots are and so on but it requires more setup for me uh, at this point um, i hope you like this video give it a like share it with your friends and colleagues if you have any questions or suggestions leave them down in the comment section down below if you haven't subscribed yet please do that and i really hope to see you in the next video